Today we're going to continue our discussion on factoring, looking at special products. So two we're going to see are difference of squares and perfect square trinomials. Now we already learned how to get this by expanding this guy. So how we get this, these two terms by expanding this. But now we're going to figure out how to get the factors. So how do we know what two things multiply together to give us that? That's what a factor is. So let's first look at difference of squares. If you remember this basic equation from earlier, we have a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. So the first question is, how do I know if I have a question that is a difference of squares? First thing you want to look for is that there are only two terms. Second thing you want to note is that the coefficients are perfect squares. And then finally, we want to make sure that between our two terms, we have a subtraction. That's why we call it a difference of squares. Difference is what you get when you subtract. So let's try it. In this first one, we have x squared minus 16. So firstly, there are definitely two terms. Now we need to check that the coefficients are perfect squares. Well, the coefficient of x is just a 1. If we don't see it, it's a 1. So 1 is a perfect square. So 1 times 1 is just 1. Now, you should be able to recognize the perfect square numbers. So 2 times 2 is 4. You can go on and see all of these ones. These numbers should kind of be ingrained in your head to recognize, hey, that's a perfect square number. So 1 is definitely on our list. 16, 4 times 4 is 16, so that is a perfect square number, so we can check that box. And then finally, is there a subtraction between them? Yes, there is. So this is a question that's asking us to factor a difference of squares. Next thing we need to do is figure out what to plug in to the second part of this equation. So this a squared minus b squared is represented by x squared minus 16. So this a squared is all of this here. Okay, minus b squared. So 16 is representing b squared. But in our second half of the equation, to get our factors, we don't want a squared, we want a, and we don't want b squared, we want b. So we have to go kind of work backwards and figure out what just a is. Well, how do we undo a square? We square root it. So we know that a is equal to the square root of x squared. So the square root of x squared is just x. And to find b, we take the square root of 16. So b is equal to 4. So now we have our a and our b that we just plug into this equation. So the factors of x squared minus 16 are a plus b, a plus b, x plus 4, times a minus b, x minus 4. And that's it. Okay, so those are our factors of x squared minus 16. Now this work here, we don't expect you to write that down. We don't want to see it. So you should be able to take the square root of something like this in your head. So you can just get your a's and your b's like that. So let's try another one. 49 minus 36 b squared. Yes, there are two terms. 49 is 7 times 7, so that's a perfect square. 36 is 6 times 6, so that's a perfect square. And there is a subtraction between them. So we know that this is all a squared. So we need to find just a by itself. Well, the square root of 49 is 7. So that's going to be in the spot of our a's. And then one bracket is plus and one bracket is minus. And then our b is the square root of 36p squared. So 36 square root is 6, and p squared, square root is p. And then b goes in both brackets, 6p. And you're done. So that's something that you can easily do, talk it through in your head, um, no problem. So that is how you factor a difference of squares. The next one are perfect trinomials. So these perfect square trinomials Please note that the difference between these two equations 
is just plus or minus in front of your term two. So this one has plus two AB and this one is minus two AB. And that shows up in our factored form as well. So how do we know if we have one of these types of questions? Well, first of all, we have three terms. So that's clearly one, two, three terms. The first and last terms are positive perfect squares. Okay, and then the last one is kind of wordy. The middle term is twice, so two times the product means multiply. So two times multiplying the square roots of terms one and three. So term one is the a, a squared, and term b is the b squared. Okay, so what does that actually look like? Let's try the first one. Let's verify that this is actually a perfect square trinomial. So first of all, there are three terms, right? One, two, three, positive perfect squares. So this is positive one, so that is a perfect square, and it's positive. And nine is three times three, so that is a perfect square, and it's positive, so that's good. And then finally, the middle term is twice the product of the square roots of terms one and three. Ooh. So let's first do this, the square roots of terms one and three. So here's term one, let's take the square root Okay, x squared becomes x. And then this is b, so the square root of 9. This step is almost identical to what we did up here. Okay, so this is a squared and this is b squared. Now we just have something in the middle. So we're still doing a squared and b squared. Right? So b is the root of 9, which is 3. Okay. And then the middle term is twice the product. So product means multiply, so we're going to multiply these together. x times 3, and twice, so times it by 2. So 2 times 3 is 6, times x is 6x. And look at that, our middle term matches. So we have verified that yes, this is a perfect square trinomial. should be able to do that if we ask, but we don't need you to do this every time. But let's find the factored form. So we have a plus b. Well, look at this, we've already found a because this term is a squared. And then term three is b squared. So we've got our a and our b. Now we just plug it in, a plus b squared, x plus three squared. And we're done. So that's great. Let's try another one that looks more tricky, but really we're following the exact same pattern. And again, we don't need to write down any of the side work. We're not going to verify it this time, but we should note that, hey, look, we have three terms, perfect square root. This is a, a positive perfect square, positive perfect square. And then we can verify that middle one as we, when we get to the end. So we know it's a subtraction, so we're going to use this equation instead of this one with a plus. So it matches this here. So we're trying to find a minus b. So here is a squared, so let's find just a. So we want to take the square root of this. So the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of p squared is just p. Okay, so there we have, that's a. And we're going to subtract b. So here is b squared, this is all b squared here. So let's take the square root of this. So the square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of q squared is q. And then we square it, and we're done. So we don't have to write any of that side work. We just need to find the square roots of term 1 and term 3. Now we can just confirm that this is what, it, what a perfect square by saying, okay, well, let's check that this one is 2 times, twice the product of the square roots. So we could do 5p times 6q times 2. Well, 5 times 2 is 10, times 6 is 60, times p times q. And hey, look, that matches our middle term, right? So 60pq, 60pq, we're good to go. We know that's a perfect square trinomial. 
Now, if you're ever really stuck, you can fully expand this. Just do FOIL and uh, write the two brackets. It's going to be this squared means you have the two brackets multiplied together. So you can always check it that way. What I'd like you to do for tonight, please, is to try these four questions in your notebook. Bring them to class tomorrow. Two of them are difference of squares, and two of them are perfect square trinomials. But please do note that on a test, we would have these questions mixed together. So you would have to be able to figure out which type is which. Have a great night.